Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial. Let's just go ahead and start our configuration. Before we can start the configuration we just need to go ahead and download some of these scripts. So you have uh, ASCII images. Basically it converts all images to ASCII text which can be kind of funny. Uh, blur images. It makes them blurry so you can't see anything on it. I personally like this one. It's Google search you are able to add extra words to whatever somebody searches you can add extra words to it so this can I've seen people do all sorts of things with this and yeah let's just go over to, onto the net let me just show you where you can download these sort of things and don't download them from anywhere else as they are executable scripts that you will give execution privileges and that you will run on your system so that can be a pretty big problem anyway go ahead use your favorite search engine type in google search.pl and it's, i've already visited the page it's google search.pl on google code so here you can we just zoom in here you can actually see the script uh you can you can read it there's it's basically you can see the code you can see everything that it does and I mean it doesn't really do much it just add it just adds a extra words to the Google search but you can view raw file you can zoom in and you can press control A to select all here control C to copy it then you need to open your terminal back up and I do believe I have some of them here Yep, there we go. I have ASCII images, I have Google search, no internet, and turret images. I got no idea what that does. But I do believe that I've tried it out since it's here. In any case, you will need to, you will need to of course, type in nano, and then, of course, you will need to use this name or this name. You, you can actually name it whatever you want. It doesn't matter, as far as I know, although you do need .pl extension. But try to try to keep the name consistent. There is no need for you to change it or anything of a kind. And you see, I basically just copy pasted this text here previously. Uh, if you didn't, you would have an empty file here. You would just right right click paste and copy everything into it. There are no modifications that you need to do to this one. However, internally, but externally, you would need to uh, type in ch mod plus x and then google search in order to give it execution privileges with some of these other scripts you do need to make certain modifications they're not extreme but you do need to actually go into the script and change a thing or two depending on the script so let's just take ascii images nano ascii images and you see here it says uh dollar sign our ip and then you need to you, I think it's the default one here is 33, but you do need to change it to whatever the local the LAN IP address of your device is, of your computer is, that is. Uh, mine is 104 at the moment, but these things tend to change, so make sure to keep the paste up. Uh, you can also assign IP addresses statically to your computers, but that can, that can present a problem when you connect to a public Wi-Fi or something of a kind. Anyway, uh, doesn't matter, don't change the IP addresses of your computer, just take a look at what it is and type it in here in order to render the script effective, in order for it to start functioning. You do need to probably just change the last octet, but I don't know, it depends what your LAN IP address is, just type it in here. This is how you can check your LAN IP address, IF config, press enter, and there you go. This is my LAN IP address, the one that I am selecting at the moment. Anyway, now that we have some of the scripts here, there is no installation procedure or anything of a kind. You basically copy-paste the script into the matching name, and that's it. You, as I said, you can name it whatever you want, but I would suggest that you name it with a .pl extension. And you can find all sorts of these scripts. I mean, names, you can just type in your favorite search engine. Uh, flip images squid let's see if that's gonna if that's gonna help us out there you go somebody has April Fool's Day redirecting do they have the list of scripts here 
No, they do not. Uh, let's just go over, let's just go over. Don't give up so fast. Apparently they don't have it here either. Do they have it on Google Code? Yep, there, there you go. Actually, you have them. It says Fight Club, Blur Images, ASCII.pl, uh, Google Search, no internet or something like that. If you're wondering what the Fight Club is, basically just substitutes all of your images on a site, if I'm not mistaken, with the imagery from the Fight Club movie or some. It definitely does something of a kind. I'm not too sure about that, but you can take a look at the descriptions if you want for every individual script. There are a lot. There are a lot of these scripts that you can find in the net, and depending on what you want to do, you can implement each one of them separately. Anyway, next up we have to configure this. We have to configure Squid, as I written here. If you install it, you need to type in nano space slash Etsy slash uh, squid and then again squid3 actually sorry and then squid.com press enter and here we're going to be doing some of the editing it ha there are 5782 lines so I'm just going to go ahead and search for what I need in order to save us a bit of time actually I don't need to search for the first one because it should be straight off the bat here Apparently not. Do forgive me, I've been modifying this yesterday, so a few things have slipped my mind. Nope, give me control V, paste, go. Oh. Okay, excellent. So these basic, uh, uh, these things, how, how do you call them, these bars, uh, they represent commented out lines. They are the lines which the program will not take into consideration. I, all you need to do is uncomment it. There you go. Now this will be taken, now this line will be taken into, this one will be taken into consideration. And if you don't want it to be taken into consideration, just put a bar there and it will not be. I have uncommented this particular line because this is uh, this is my network. So 192.168.0.0 with a subnet mask uh, with 16. Anyway, depending on what your configuration is, uh, make sure to choose a proper one. How you will find you will you should be able to find it. I mean, these are ranges for home IP addresses. Most of them, if not, I'm pretty sure you can add your own as well. But I'm not too sure about that. Doesn't really matter. You will find yourselves there as most likely it will be in this one one i two one six eight dot zero dot zero slash sixteen. So yeah, that's a that's a lot of bits. Sixteen is both of the both of these ranges will change. This is the host part of the IP address and these are the amount of hosts that you can have. So 250, 250, 255 here and 255 here and then you get the combination. So that's that's a lot of hosts. I don't know how many but a lot in general. Let's go ahead and find our next next thing that we need to modify. So HTTP access allow. Copy paste where is it excellent so this this line this can be com this can be a commented line so that can be a problem like this uh, you need to uncomment it and have it run as it is okay so the next step what we have to do is change the port 3812 no not the port but we need to make sure that it is transparent so let me just show it to you what I mean by that Excellent. So usually you will have only this line that I have selected without the one that I am selecting now. So the word transparent will not be here. You literally need to just type it in there. Just type in transparent right next to the port with a space in between. Uh, this We're doing this so that computers, connect, computers that we are ARP spoofing would not at all need any sort of configuration with their browsers or anything of a kind they will use proxy by default when we spoof them 
Anyway, uh, that's it as far as the squid proxy is concerned. We don't actually need to do any other changes aside from assigning it a script to use, and that's going to be the end of it. But this we are going to change. This you can actually change multiple times if you wish. And this is where all the changes come into play. Ah, oh, come on. Don't do this to me. Excellent, there we go, at the end. So you are. this one actually needs to be at the end. And most likely, it will not be written by default. So the command that I am selecting now, just write it down at the bottom of this configuration file. Uh, if it's not there, just write it in. Just write it down, and that's it. Uh, this here is the path. And this here, right next to it, is the script that I'm going to be using, the one that I've just uh, fetched from the internet. Now the path can be different, of course, uh, since this is Kali Linux with a default installation, pretty much everything goes into the root folder and there, from there it gets used elsewhere. But anyway, this is just the path and over here is the script itself, nothing more. And this you need to write in here if you wish to use any external scripts, and that's it. Now, when you change the script, just change the path if necessary. If they're at the same place, just change the name of the script. That's all, but you do need to reset uh, the squid proxy server in order for changes to take effect. So press, press Control o to save, Enter, Control x to exit. Now we have completely configured uh, squid. Let me just type in service squid 3 restart this can take up a while I don't know depending on what is going on as I said the configuration file is rather lengthy and this is a virtual machine so it's gonna take a while for it to actually reload or restart until then I'm gonna bid you farewell and continue in the follow-up tutorial